anything else. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I just thank you that you are so involved with our lives that you know each and every request. I, I pray for this neighbor that needs surgery on the eyes, Lord, that you will just be there to uh, guide the hands of the surgeons and that everything will, will turn out well and that uh, he'll be able to see and be able to have vision for, for many years to come. And uh, I pray uh, for Carson with this uh, disease that's shutting things down, that uh, you just bring a total healing in, into his body and uh, for Rainey's sister and just all those that are on our hearts and minds, their friends, neighbors, loved ones, that uh, you know how to move in a way that will bring you glory and honor. And I, uh, I thank you, Lord, for Dennis having uh, good family members that are there to help and to be able to fellowship with. And uh, I just ask, Lord, that right now our hearts and our minds will be focused on you, that we will be attentive to what you have for us, because I know that you want to teach each of us, Holy Spirit, uh, in the message today. And I ask that we will all be attentive to what you have for us today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So we left off, and I heard Romans chapter 6, verse 6 is what John told me. Was he right? Romans 6, 6. Because if John was white, right, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's... <laughs> I'm not used to you having that information for me. It's usually Chris that's over rain hitting me with that. So um, this section is is really um, gets into the heart of the message and some of the things that we're talking about. And uh, he's talked about in Romans chapter five and you know starting in verse twelve around there, where he's talking about the death that came from Adam and the a condemnation that came on from Adam the the fact that when Adam sinned you know there was one commandment don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and when Adam ate of that tree we all became guilty in Adam because our seed was in Adam and we all had that condemnation passed upon us and from Adam until the time of Moses when they got the law there was no law, so how could there be a trespass? How could there be sin? How could there be something? Well, we talked about the natural uh, understanding that we have, the nature that God's placed in us to know that naturally we know it's wrong to murder someone and, and things like that. So there was still that aspect in which people sin. But there was a condemnation that came just from the very first sin and a death that came to everyone. And then when the law came, now there's all these trespasses, all these sins, all the guilt that's passed on everyone. And uh, we get to the point where, you know, in Romans, he talks about that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, that there's none righteous. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're Jew, if you're Greek, if you're, you know, good, you're bad, you're mama's best boy, or you're the black sheep of the family or whatever, everybody's guilty. Uh, everybody has sin in their lives. And the fact that Jesus came and died for our sin and that the gift was so much greater than that one trespass that, that brought death because then there's all the sin, all the guilt, all the the issues that we've had in our lives, all the times we've misbehaved, all the times we've lied, all the times we've gone against our parents, all the times we've done our own thing, all the times we've broken laws in our lives. But Jesus died for our sins. While we were powerless to do anything in ourselves, Christ died for our sins. Uh, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And the fact that the gift that he gave is so much greater than the original death that came the original sin that came because now with a multitude of sins Christ was able to come and bring forgiveness of sins and then in uh, chapter 6 as we get into there uh, he talks about how that that grace that comes that that freedom that comes comes because we are now dead uh, to our old way of life we're dead to who we used to be and he talks about baptism and how when we are baptized and we go in the water and we get immersed under the water how we are saying we are dead to who we used to be and as we come up out of the water 
water. We're saying we're alive as new creatures in Christ. Uh, you know, the old things have passed away. All things become new. And we're now living a whole new life in him. And because of the life that we have in Jesus, because we are now living a life that is coming from the Holy Spirit of God, and because it's a new life, we're able to walk forth and not be in bondage to that sin anymore. We don't have to do the same things we did anymore. Uh, prior to giving our lives to the Lord, prior to accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are slaves to sin. We are in bondage to sin. Uh, we are in corruption all around us. Our parents are sinners and they raised us to be sinners and the culture is all full of sinners and uh, television and radio and all around us, it's all sin and it's all bombarding us and it's all grabbing us and, and corrupting us and bringing us into that whole culture. But when we die to our old life in Jesus Christ, we surrender our life to him. Now we have a new life and we have an opportunity to walk in righteousness. We have an opportunity to walk in holiness. We don't have to go on sinning uh, anymore. We're going to have struggles in our lives. We're going to have issues in our lives. We're going to have problems in our lives. But we have a righteousness that comes by faith in Jesus Christ. And so that's kind of the context of where we're at in um, Romans chapter 6. Uh, and I'll start in verse 5. It says that if we've been united with him like this in his death, and this is again talking about um, uh, baptism, uh, where we're united with him in his death, and I'm reading from the New International Version, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be done away with, and that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been free from sin and here's the beauty of it whereas before uh, we were in bondage to sin we were slaves to sin we were destined to sin um, you know it, it doesn't take a child long to figure out how to sin uh, it doesn't take a, a, a person long to figure out how to break laws uh, it doesn't take a, a, a young person very long uh, anybody ever be a child and you you, you figured out how to lie did you need any help figuring that out? <laughs> kind of came naturally, didn't it? <laughs> you know, the, the sin just comes naturally to us because we're slaves to sin. But now in Christ Jesus, as we die to our old life, as we are joined with him in death in the same way he died once for all, uh, we join with him in that death. Now we are united with him in the resurrection. We are raised with him in the new life and we're seated with him in the right hand of God in heaven. Or we're seated with him in heavenly places and we have an opportunity now because we're dead to sin. We're not slaves to sin anymore. We're free. And we're free because we're dead. We are, we're, we're not the same person we were anymore. Uh, and so we don't have to let that sin live inside of us anymore. We don't have to be surrendering ourselves to sin. Because when we sin and when we serve sin, it becomes a master over our lives. It becomes a slave master. And we become a slave to that sin. Um, you, you think about it with, with addictions and things like that and how easy it is to, to start off, you know, it's it's one drink, it's it's one drug, it's it's one one uh, game of gambling, whatever the addiction is, it's, it's one look at this pornography or whatever it is, and, and then all of a sudden it's a little more and it's a little more and it's a little deeper and it's a little deeper, and and something you think you can have control over suddenly comes and it controls you because you are a slave to that sin. You end up serving that sin. Uh, how many people get caught up in, in into their addictions and that's all they're thinking about that's all they're doing uh, is whatever that addiction is they think about it from the time they get up to the time they go to sleep they're finding ways to get money to serve uh, that addiction that they have that sin that's controlling them uh, they'll even get to the point where individuals will lie and steal and and kill uh, to serve that that thing that has control over them because they become that slave to sin well, now that we are dead in Christ, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, and we join with Him in baptism, we're surrendering, we're dead 
to that old way of life, now we're not that same person anymore. And because we're not that same person anymore, we don't have to be in bondage to those things any longer. We're all going to have struggles in our lives. We're all going to have times. There's going to be various things. We each have different strengths and weaknesses, uh, things that we need help with. But we don't have to be in bondage to that anymore. We don't have to be a slave to that anymore. We now have the freedom to choose to serve God. We now have the freedom to choose to do what's right. We, we now have the freedom to choose not to lie. We now have the freedom to choose not to steal. We now have the freedom to choose not to go back to that drink or that drug or that pornography or gambling or, or whatever the addictions are that are in our lives. We don't have to get caught up in those things any longer and we have a freedom to walk in freedom. I love it. Freedom to walk in freedom. <laughs> it's so cool. Uh, and it's that new life that we have. It's that new resurrection power of Jesus. And one of the things that's, that's being emphasized here in Romans is it's like, how much more if Christ died for us while we were sinners and he, he was able to bring us into his death, how much more are we going to have life inside of him? You know, we talked about it last week. Jesus said he came that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. Uh, it's not just a, 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 a weak life. It's not just a little bit of a life. It's not just a, a slightly different life than we might have without Christ. Because of Jesus Christ in our lives, we're able to have an abundant life. We're having, able to have a life of joy. We're able to have a life of peace. We're have, able to have a life of productivity. We're able to have the opportunity to be productive in this world. We're able to have a life that changes other people's lives. We're able to have a life that will affect others around us. I mean, how many people will talk about the culture around them or things around them or their neighborhood or whatever it is around them. And they'll talk about all the problems, all the issues, all the things, uh, their family, all the problems they have with their family. It's like, we have an opportunity to be an answer. We have an opportunity to be a solution. We have an opportunity to be a catalyst for change. We have an opportunity to be one that bring love to other people. We have an opportunity to be ones that bring life to other people. We have an opportunity to bring productivity and blessings to other people. And it's because we have that new life in Him. That's right. That's good news. Yes, it is. I like it. Anybody else think it's good news? Yeah, I think some of you said it was good news. <laughs> good. All right. So we're freed from that sin. We're freed from that bondage. We're freed from that slavery that we have. Um, uh, verse 8 it says, Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we also live with him. Uh, for we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. And here's the beauty of it. When Jesus died for our sins, and then he was raised again from the dead, he only had to die that one time, and that death was for each and every one of us. Yes, it's appointed on the man once to die, and after that, the judgment. Praise God, though, we can be dead in Christ, so we don't have to face death, hell, and the grave. The only thing we have to face is eternal life in him. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing because we're dead in him and it's only that one time death. Now he lives forever, seated at the right hand of God forever. He lives forever in heavenly realms. And as we are joined with him and we become partakers of his spirit, we're right up there with him. We have access to the very throne room of God. Yeah. Well, we have an intimate relationship with God where we can bring our requests to him. We can bring our needs to him. We can bring our struggles to him we can bring our issues to him we can bring our problems to him we can bring the things that we're dealing with in our lives where we have emotional things that we're dealing with or having issues with other people or we're having problems and knowing what to do and how to deal with situations we can bring it to him and know that he hears us know that he will bring an answer know that he will bring wisdom into our lives and he doesn't find fault 
He, he doesn't go to us and say, oh, why are you coming to me with that problem? I don't care about you. No, he cares about every intimate detail of our lives. The very hairs on our head are numbered. And he loves us so much that he wants to come and be an answer for us. He wants to come and help us with the problems that we're dealing with. He wants to help us with the issues that we have with family members, with friends, with, with sin that's around us, with all the different things that's happening in our lives. He wants to be involved there and he wants to come with his resurrection power and bring life and peace and healing and all those things into our lives. Praise God. Stop for a minute. Anybody have any questions or comments? I have a comment. Yes. Um, the sin, the sin, con it has to be a, a decision you make. Every day when you wake up, that you're not going to consciously sin. I mean, you have to ask the Lord for that because it doesn't come. But we get up, and our nature is just to do the wrong things. Just one of those things. You get up in the morning, you're not thinking, okay, you know, I should be kind, I should be this thing. You get up, you get in the road, you start yelling and screaming. But you have to make a decision. It's a lot easier not conscious. to sin before we get up, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. You have to make a conscious <laughs> decision to walk with Christ. Every day, like, you know, I, mean, I know you're talking about addictions or big addictions. Some some people don't deal with those things. The little things, the little sins. Sometimes we think are minute, and we don't have to deal with them. You know, just the complaining spirit, the nagging, the gossiping. Those little things, we need to consciously say, "I'm not going to do that in Christ," because I I died to those things, mm -hmm. and we have to walk where we can help people. I mean, that's like you were saying. We are, that's what we are here for was to help our neighbors and to walk with them and not to judge them and not to be mean or hateful or whatever it is. And the other part I was saying, but as, as us that we die to Christ, I thought about it and how the a generation that doesn't follow Christ, they choose to die in the name of Allah and in the name of, you know, all those things. They don't have life after that. Mm -hmm. You know, but we have life after that. When we die, we know where our life goes, where our heart goes, where our soul goes, I should say. Well, that's a big difference. And you have a Muslim God that wants the followers to die for him. Yeah. And we have Jesus, who is the Son of God, who is willing to die for us so that we can live. Um, their God wants to bring death and death to them and death to others. Our God brings life and life to us and life to others. Mm -hmm. it, not just life for us, but life for others. Yeah. And, and there are there's there's lots of things that we can be addicted to and, and get caught up in. Uh, like you talked about, you know, when we get up in the morning, I mean, just negative thoughts. Yeah. You know, we get negative ideas, negative thoughts. Uh, you know, when I think about. Uh, the issue that you go all the way back to the time of the flood and one of the things that the Bible talks about is that uh, every thought and inclination was of the heart was on evil all the time and, and sometimes we might read something like that and we think oh they were all thinking about ways to steal and ways to murder and ways you know and that's the evil that they're talking about that's not the only way that our heart can be on evil all the time and our thoughts on evil all the time another way that our thoughts and uh, inclinations of our heart can be on evil is where we're thinking evil things about our lives around us like you know we don't hear from somebody and we start thinking oh they died in a car accident oh something something bad happened to them you know we're, we're not necessarily wishing evil on somebody but we're thinking oh bad things are happening this is happening oh we didn't hear from that person oh they don't like me anymore oh they're they're talking about me oh there's you know all these things and these evil thoughts that start to come in and control us and affect the way that we see other people affect the way that we feel about other people affect the way that we talk about other people, uh, uh, affect the, the way that we will worry about someone else and some issue that's happening, or there's, uh, you know, they're, they're sick, they're, oh, we hear that someone's sick, oh, they're going to die, you know, all of a sudden, you know, these are thoughts of evil, instead of thinking, oh, praise God, he's going to bring healing, they're going to be okay, uh, we're going to get a good report, uh, you know, that we start to change that thought process, and we're able to change that thought process, and not be addicted to all these evil thoughts, and evil ideas, and, and, 
and just the darkness that happens. And it is. It's a lot easier not to sin before we get up in the morning. But then we get up and all of a sudden, no, oh, now we got to face life. <laughs> we got to face our neighbors and we got to. Oh, yeah. Good Lord to help you that day. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Before you get out of bed. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, that's that's the old prayer. It's like, oh God, I thank you. I haven't I haven't lied and I haven't cheated and I haven't swore and I haven't done anything. You know, but, but please help me because I'm about to get up out of bed and you know it's going to get a lot rougher here real quick. And that's where the consciousness comes in. You know, mm -hmm. we have to, he's given us the consciousness when we were about to sin or we are about to say something wrong or whatever. We know in our spirit. That's not the right thing to do. Yeah. So that's a conscious decision. Okay, I'm not going there. Yeah. And each person here, everywhere in the world who's accepted Christ, will will stand before the Lord individually. We won't stand with another person to back you up and say, "This is why you did this." Yeah. Or this is a, you have to stand before the Lord to answer for your deeds that you did. And there is a natural consci consciousness of sin that we have in our lives, right and wrong that we have. But if we keep on sinning, if we keep on going down that path, we start to harden our heart. It starts to become easier and easier to sin. It starts to become easier and easier to go deeper and deeper into sin. I mean, you think about people that become, you know, like a mass murderer or something like that. They don't start off that way. They start off in, in you know, maybe hurting someone or stalking someone or something like that. And then it goes deeper and deeper. And the next thing you know, they're, they're kidnapping people and murdering people. And, and it just becomes natural to them uh, it just becomes something that their hearts become so hard uh, that it becomes easy to do you know one little white lie all of a sudden becomes all these big lies you know it's so easy to to let that hardness of heart come in and praise god that's where jesus can come and as we surrender our lives to him and we die to that old way of life we can be that new person uh, and we can walk in that newness of life um, the verse 11 says, um, in the same way, count yourself dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. And so he says, Listen, in the same way that we know that Jesus died and then he was resurrected from the dead and he's not going to face death any longer. He's alive eternally before God. He's never going to die again. He's got eternal life. In the same way, count yourself dead to sin. So when sin starts to come over, when these old habits come in, when these old lies start to come in from the enemy, when your uh, flesh starts to lead you down that path to that thing again that, that you were addicted to or those um, desires that you know are contrary to what God wants you to do, count yourself dead to sin, but see yourself as being alive to God. And don't let that sin take control of you any longer. Don't let that sin reign in your mortal body. Now that you're a new creature, you have an opportunity to resist that sin. Yes, before we know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we're a slave to sin. And that's why we need Jesus to set us free. He who the Son makes free is free indeed. We need that freedom. We need that forgiveness. Jesus talked about that with the Jews that believed in him. And they're like, well, we're not a slave to anyone. And he said, don't you know that when you sin, you become a slave to that sin? Okay. And he says, but now count yourself dead to that. As you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you're going to walk with him now. You're saying, I am going to serve Jesus instead of serving sin. I'm going to serve Jesus instead of serving my flesh. And here's the thing about flesh. It's not like we just have this evil, wicked nature that's all around us. Flesh is very natural desires, very natural things that we have in our lives. Like uh, we have desires to eat. We have desires for intimate relationships. We have uh, lots of different desires in our lives that are natural. But what flesh does and what sin does is it starts to take those natural things and bring them to an unnatural conclusion. Mm 
Mm-hmm. So it can bring us to this place, and instead of being then a natural relation between a husband and a wife, it becomes fornication, or it becomes homosexuality, or it becomes some kind of bestiality, or some kind of strange perversion of, of these things. Uh, it's uh, taking something that's natural, going to an unnatural place, a natural desire to eat starts to turn into gluttony uh you know a natural desire for uh for drink and and substance you know starts to go into alcoholism and and all these different things that it go, go into and drug addictions and uh pornography and all the different things there's some natural things that are there that then go to an unnatural place and that's where sin takes that mastery that's where we become that slave to sin he says consider yourself dead to that don't let it rain any longer as we surrender to jesus christ as our lord and savior we don't have to let that rain in our lives any longer we don't have to serve that sin any longer we can walk in freedom because we have a freedom that comes from our life in him and that's good news it's also a responsibility we have we can't just say you know what was the old red skeleton I don't know. Someone really old like Kurt might remember. Uh, <laughs> the devil made me do it. That was Red that Skelton, was wasn't it? Richard Pryor, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Wilson? Okay. Yeah. I knew it was one of those guys. Flip Wilson, wasn't it? Flip yeah. Wilson? Is that what it was? Yeah. <laughs> devil made me do it. It's all his fault. No, you're letting sin reign in your body. Right. Now, before we know Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, that's legit. <laughs> when we surrender to Him, that's the freedom that we have. That's the ability now that we have to walk and separate ourselves from that. We're not that slave any longer. Uh, we see somebody that doesn't know Jesus as the Lord and Savior and sin's reigning in their lives, of course. They're a slave to sin, they need freedom. We have an opportunity to bring freedom. We have an opportunity to bring deliverance. We have an opportunity to bring Jesus Christ into their lives so they can then be having Him as Lord instead of having sin as Lord. That's good news. I like it. Um, So it says, uh, don't let sin, verse 12, therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. And that's the thing with sin. Sin has desires that are not good, desires that are evil, desires that are destructive. The wages of sin is death. Sin will bring death into your life. Sin will bring destruction into your life. Sin will bring misery into your lives. I mean, yeah, and you can maybe you see it in your own lives. You see it in the lives of people around you. I mean, they get caught up in sin, and all of a sudden they start losing their family, losing their homes, losing their jobs, losing their prosperity, losing uh, their relationships, losing so many different things. And especially, you know, one of the things you know we talked about when you get into some of the addictions and things like that, mm-hmm. and how destructive uh, it can be in the people's lives and that's what sin does Uh, it brings death it brings destruction it brings separation Uh, it destroys relationships Uh, you know how many people just have sin reigning in their lives and they're on their their fourth fifth sixth marriage you know and they got all these kids that that, that, that live separated from moms and dads and they live in this house and that house and separated and just all the evil that comes from that all the destruction that comes from that all the misery that comes from that sin praise god there's an answer Amen. Yes, there is. there's an answer and it's jesus christ as lord of our lives um, and then as we accept him as the lord then let him be lord and not surrender to the sin any longer not let it rain uh, verse 13 do not offer the parts of your body to sin as instruments of wickedness but rather offer yourself to god as those who have been brought from death to life Offer the parts of your body to him as instruments of righteousness. For sin shall not be your master, because you are not under the law, but under grace. And and here's the beauty of it. Now... We can take our lives and we can surrender it to Jesus. You know, when we start our day, Lord, I surrender my hands to you. I surrender my feet to you. How about this? I surrender my mouth to you. How many of us, we need to let Jesus be Lord over the things that we say? We need to let Jesus be Lord over the things that we do with our hands. We need to let Jesus be Lord over where we take ourselves, where we walk. We need to let Jesus be Lord over our thoughts. 
You know, we're letting these evil thoughts come in. We're letting these negative thoughts come in. You know, uh, dealing even even when we start getting into depression and suicide and different thoughts like that that can come in. Man, we need to let Jesus be Lord over that because that is not of God. That is of the enemy. And as we let Jesus be Lord over those areas of our lives and we surrender ourselves to him, even, even take that time in the morning and, and verbally say it, Lord, I surrender myself to you. I surrender my body to you. I am going to serve you with my body instead of serving my flesh, instead of serving the enemy, instead of serving sin. I am going to serve you, Lord. How do you want to use me? Present our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto him. And praise God that we can do that. When you start thinking of yourself as unworthy because you think that other people don't love you or you don't even feel like you love yourself, just remember that God chooses small people. He mm -hmm. doesn't go after big people. Yeah. And He loves you the way you are. Yeah, you think of Jesus, you know, He didn't go to the palaces and the, right. the great Pharisees and Sadducees and the teachers of the law and those that were well educated and they knew all the answers. Those he was, he was going to fishermen, right. tax collectors, prostitutes hung out with Jesus. Right. He got along great with prostitutes. Right. He he got along great with people that had been demon possessed and he cast the demons out of them. That's right. People. They, they hung out with Jesus. That's the kind of people Jesus hung out with. And that's the kind of people Jesus uses. Yeah, and that's one of the lies of the enemy that he'll try to get us on. You're not worthy. You're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You're not talented enough. You're not committed enough. You're not going to, God doesn't want you. He's not going to use you. No, God can use each and every one of us to the furtherance of his kingdom. And he has a special place for each and every one of us. And that place he has for us is important in the kingdom. Yes, it is. And it doesn't have to be big. We don't have to be some Billy Graham or something like that that's out there. No, we just find the place that God has for us. We can serve him, be part of his kingdom, and we can see life flourish around us as we find that place in him. Mm -hmm. And he wants to use each of us. Robert. Um, Amen. Yes, uh, this sermon today has given me confirmation. I was in... Um, Ephesians. Uh -huh. and, uh, and it says, uh, You were taught with regard to your, your former way of life to put off the old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, yeah. to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new mm -hmm. self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Yeah. And I, I, Amen. I was going through that, and it was going through my mind, and to me, it was it, was, <clears throat> it came to me kind of like a garment. That yeah. We, that we can put on and off, you know. The, Absolutely. Sometimes when when evil tries to be surfaced, like you were speaking earlier, in our minds, and mm -hmm. and, and, and starts to uh, develop, you know, evilness, you know. Right. Uh, that old self can try to come back. Absolutely. You know, it's an you have to put put take that off if it's on you like that. You yeah. Put on your new garment that God has given you. Yeah, absolutely. That's exactly right. It's and it's you know, one of the things is we're dead in Christ. We're dead to that. There's no sense letting it be resurrected again letting it come back to life. And I, and I love that part in Ephesians because it talks about you know you put off that old self by in your mind. You're changing the way you're thinking. You're changing the way you're looking at things. And and the idea of it being clothing is exactly what Scripture does talk about. It talks about us being clothed with Christ yes. uh, and how we need to put on Christ. Um, you know, another way, thing that it's called is, you know, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness is another thing you read in the Bible, you know. And, you know, and, then, and that's where you start even looking at things like the, short, the, the sword of the spirit and the breastplate of righteousness. Where does that righteousness come? It's by faith in Jesus Christ, you know, and we have that righteousness. So yeah, the idea of clothing is, I mean, it's, it's throughout um, other places in the scripture and it's exactly that. When I get up in the morning, what am I going to wear? Am I going to wear my old clothes and be my old self and be that slave to sin 
Right. Or I'm going to take control of my life and I'm going to say, no, I'm going to be serving the Lord. I'm going to surrender myself to the Lord. I'm going to fix my mind on Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith. I am going to take the word of God and I am going to hide it in my heart. And I'm going to live in a way that is serving the truths and principles of Scripture. I know a lot of what's right and wrong no, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do what's right. I'm going to surrender to him. Uh, I'm going to serve him, and I'm going to clothe myself with Christ. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, exactly right. Hi, Chris. How you doing? It's good to see you. Bobby, what do you think? I give people a second to process something. <laughs> cool. Um, and, uh, you know, I go back to, uh, I guess, for verse 14. It says, For sin shall not be your master, because you are not under the law, but under grace. Yeah. And here's the, the, the thing with the law and, and the issue that, uh, came with the law. With, without the law, there's no trespass. When the, when the law came, what happened? The law was introduced, and as soon as the law was introduced, sin used the opportunity of the law to take control over our lives. Yeah. You know, we didn't even know about coveting. The law said, don't covet, and all of a sudden, people started coveting, you know, is, is what, what Paul talks about. And, you know, we talked about this last week. You know, if you ever want to get kids to, to do something, uh, tell them not to do it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like <laughs> I talked about the grandpa that was leaving the house and the kids were cleaning beans, and he says, "I don't want to come back and find out them beans are up your nose." And you know, he came back later, and guess what? The beans were up their nose because <laughs> they suddenly got this idea. Uh, uh, I was uh, reading what one author was writing a book, and he was talking about this in his book, and his, his, some kids were playing outside, so he thought, well, I'm going to try this. So, so he goes outside, and he says, whatever you kids do, don't touch that flower over there. And then he went back inside, and he started watching out the window, and sure enough, it wasn't long, you know, and the kids are touching the flower. And they're like, oh, I wonder what's going to happen when I touch it. And it's just like, you know, the, the, this whole, um, sin just has a way of taking the opportunity of the law and coming in and, and controlling us and taking over. Uh, praise God that in Christ Jesus we have now a law of spirit and life that sets us free from the law of sin and, and death. Before it was a written law and everybody was guilty. Before it was a written law and if you broke one law, you were guilty of the whole law. Now the law is, is summed, up, summed up in two commandments, really. Really one, but we'll, 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 we'll make it two. What are the two commandments? Love God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. Mm -hmm. What's the second Love your neighbor as yourself. That's pretty good. Fair commandments? Yeah. Reasonable? Something we should want to do? Love God who created us, who created everything around us, who loved us enough to send his son down to die for our sins, who gave us an opportunity for life. Love him with everything we have. Right. All of our strength, all of our mind, all of our soul. Love him first and foremost. And then because he loved us, and because we're able to love him, to love our neighbor as ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, to say, but for the grace of God, there goes I. Yeah. How can I help my neighbor? How can I help my family member? How can I help my friends? How can I love them and accept them where they're at? Not necessarily accept what they're doing, yeah. but accept them and love them and encourage them and help them to find the freedom and to break free from that bondage of sin and to help them in serving God and Jesus as their Lord. Amen. Praise God. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yes, it is. I'm, I'm willing to give that a whirl. Yeah. <laughs> Might as well. <laughs> right? Yeah. Love God and then love our neighbor as ourselves. Good news. Yep. That's the best news. Yeah, it is. Um, let's see. Oh, um, yeah, go, go in verse uh, 15. It says, What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? And, and this is 
some of the detractors of Paul, some of the ones that followed around and tried to cause problems for Paul, would say that this is what he's saying. You're saying we're not under the law, we're under grace, so we should just go on sinning so that grace can abound, we should sin because we don't have to worry about the law. And he's like, by no means. Verse 16, don't you know that when you offer... Uh, when you offer yourselves to someone to obey them as slaves, you are a slave to the one whom you obey, whether you are a slave to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you wholeheartedly obeyed the form of teaching to which you were entrusted. Um, you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. And he says, no, it's not a matter of, okay, now that we're free, you know, that, that was the other one in Galatians, you'll see, you know, it's for freedom that Christ set you free. We have freedom uh, it, in God. We're free from sin. We're free from the law. Uh, we're free from all these regulations that are all around us. But just because we're free, it doesn't mean that we go on sinning. It doesn't mean that we then let sin reign in our body. Because if we go sin because of that freedom we have, if we go sin because our righteousness is by faith and not of works, then we're going to become a slave again to that sin. We're going to let sin reign in our body and it's going to take control of us and it's going to lead to death. It's going to lead to separation from God. We need to be slaves to God. We need to be slaves to his love and we need to let his righteousness reign in our lives. Yeah. And the freedom we have is a freedom to be able to obey him, to be able to serve him, to be able to love him and to be able to see his life and power and love and freedom flow in us, through us, around us. You can only serve one master at a time. Yeah. You're going to have to serve somebody. It may be the devil. It may be the Lord. I know it's an old song. But you're going to have to serve somebody. <laughs> I'm trying to bring Kurt into it with the old, old references. She's older than I am. <laughs> oh, no. We never go there. <laughs> Praise God. Anybody have anything before we close in prayer? Yes. Um, I do have one comment. You know that the one one of the ways to attack that kind of stuff is the Lord says that we have to be in His Word. Yeah. Because we can't just get up in the morning asking for, um, which He will help us. But if you're not in the Word, then throughout the day the enemy is right there. You know, He'll put people like Kurt in your path. Thank right. God. Yeah. And, you, and, you, and you're thanking God, have mercy on you. Have mercy on you. But you know, he puts anybody. There's so many people that, that come just like you're thinking that. But if you don't have the word in your heart or if you don't have it on you, like yeah, that's why he said, you keep it in your right on your forehead. So the, the, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. So that we need that when we go out in the world. That's right. To have, because we don't read the word and not saying if we come on church on Sunday morning and we just hear the word on Sunday morning and that's all we get or Sunday evening or whatever. Yeah, that's not we, enough. Not enough. Nope. We need to be Especially with some preachers. Constantly, <laughs> all the time, you know, to study for ourselves. It has to be an Absolutely. You go home, you study, and he says for you, that's how you attack the enemy. Because he, no matter how fast that you think you're walking in Christ, he is right there. Yes, he is. And he will put people and paths in your way that will just devastate you and you're back down into ground level. Again. We, we have our flesh pulling against us. We have culture pulling against yeah. us. We have the enemy pulling against us. We have the world around us pulling against us. Yeah, there's a lot. And we need the word. Robert? Um, I have a quick question about false doctrine. Uh-huh. Um, as a pastor that we're going back and forth on uh, Facebook. Uh-huh. Uh, if the people under... Uh, false doctrine, mm -hmm. are they um, uh, accountable for, for what they're being told? Yeah. If it's false? Yeah, because yeah. they, the, they need to get in the Word. Yeah, you need to, to take wherever you are, wherever you're learning, uh, whatever you're receiving and teaching, and, and you need to study the Word yourself and make sure it's right. You shouldn't take anything I say is yeah. just, oh yeah, that's right. You know, you should study it and, and make sure. Uh, no, you know, hopefully. I'm not going to lead you down some false path, but but you have an accountability to yourself to make sure that it's in, in keeping with Scripture and stuff. Yep. And as a matter of fact, as we get into the idea of um, 
the what's called the sinful nature and bondage of sin and some things like that. I have some different ideas on that than some traditional views that are out there, and we'll, we'll get into that in, in, in the coming weeks. And that's one of those things I go, man, you better study it, because what if I was wrong on that or something? You know, I'm not. I'm, you know, obviously I'm right. <laughs> but no, yeah, we, we, we are responsible to study it ourselves. And separate wheat from chaff. You know, there's there, there's there's some uh, preachers out there I like to listen to, and a lot of what they say, I'm like, yeah, you know, right on. And then there's some other stuff I'm just like, eh, you know, they're off on that. And so then I take, you know, the good and separate it from the bad. There's one guy I listen to that, uh, man, I don't like him because a lot of what he says I don't agree with. But I look at his testimony and I look at the, the, the scripture that he's using, and I'm thinking, but he might be right. So it challenges me to study it more. You know, and so I'm like, ah, I think he's wrong, but I, you know, so I, I still listen to him to kind of challenge me in some areas that, that he, he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah, we, we still have a responsibility. Obviously, the teachers have a, a greater judgment, and it talks about that in scripture. It talks about there's a blackest darkness that's for them, uh, some of those ones. Uh, but still, as individuals, we have a responsibility. Well, that's where your, that's where your teachers of the Bible come in. If, if you read it and you still not understand it, and you pray to the good Lord to give you the knowledge mm -hmm. to understand it and the wisdom to understand what he's trying to tell you. And the Holy Spirit comes as a teacher yeah. in our yes, lives. He does. Yeah. And that that's where the the if you look in the in the Acts there were the the group the Bereans uh, it was the, a town and the Bereans were commended because when Paul I think it was Paul that was there I don't think it was Peter I'm pretty sure it was Paul oh. Paul was teaching there the Bereans would go home after they heard him preach all day and then they'd go study in the Word and make sure what he said was right and they were commended for that. Yeah. Uh, you know, and here's Paul who wrote most of the New Testament saying, good on you. You're studying to make sure what I'm saying is right. Yeah, so. study to show myself approved. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for the fact that you have uh, set us free. I thank you, Lord, for the freedom that we have in, in serving you as, as Savior Jesus. Uh, and, and right now I just pray if there's anyone here that's never made that surrender, that uh, even now, today, before this week is done, they'll make a surrender to you as, uh, as Lord and Savior. And I, I ask you, Lord, to help us to be able to each day to surrender our lives to you, to be clothed with you, and to uh, fix our minds on you, focus on you, Jesus, as the author and finish of our faith and to take your word and hide it in our heart to study to show ourselves approved and to be the workman worthy uh, of the work that you have called us to do uh, and i thank you for it in jesus name amen, amen.